Betty Davis in An American is Born, written and directed by Arch Obler for the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. Our play tonight is about a great nation and little people. The great nation is America, and the little people are Carl and Martha Croft, a young man and his wife who were born and lived most of their lives in Europe, and who had a dream, like millions of other little people all over the world, of America, where men sing a song about freedom and call it a holy light. This is the story of two people among the many who have sought that light again, after it had been extinguished in the place they had called home. We tell you their story now. An American is Born, written by Arch Obler, based on a story by Fania Foss and Peter Packer, starring Miss Betty Davis. The place, the border between the United States and Mexico. An archway is across the street. The words on it glint sharply in the sunshine, entering Mexico. A man and a woman stand there, backs to the American side, eyes on the sun-baked road into Mexico. They are Carl and Martha Croft, young, eager, impatient. Carl. Yes? With the left foot first, please. That means we'll be back soon. All right. One, two, three, go. <laughs> there. Now we are in Mexico. Uh, not for long, I hope. It looks romantic. Uh, romantic. Anyway, Mexicali is only a border town. It's a hybrid. Whatever it is, it is only for a few days. So don't look so unhappy, my darling. Amigos, you register in here, this way. Oh, 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 yes, of course. Uh, Marty, you know some more infernal questions and signatures and explanations. Yes, darling. Uh, names, please. Uh, Carl Croft. Uh, this is my wife, Marta. Uh, not Americans. No, Czechoslovakian. Your passports, please. Uh, yes, of course. And what is your reason for coming to Mexico, Senor Croft? Well, you see, I... Uh... Speak up, Senor. Kylie, I could tell him. No, no, ma... No, why shouldn't I tell him the truth? You see, sir, the reason we have come to Mexico is because I am going to... Well, you... See, I want my son to be born an American. So you come to Mexico. Well, Kylie, you tell him. We are here because uh, they told us it is the fastest way to get back into America officially. Uh, I am an engineer, and my wife and I came here from Prague by way of Lisbon. Uh, the very last boat. We could not stay in America. We had no visa for there, only for here. And the American officials told us that if we want to stay in America and become citizens, first we must leave the country and come back in again under the quota law. That is why we're here. So, I will stamp your passport. Oh. Carl and Martha Croft. May you enjoy your stay in Mexico. Thank oh, you. Thank, thank you very much. You are very kind. But you understand we can only stay here a few days. We must get back to America. <laughs> it's the best room in the house. <laughs> Hot and cold running water, if you run for it. <laughs> a bath in every room, if you climb in the washbowl. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really pretty terrible, isn't it? Oh, Callie, what's the difference? Today is Wednesday. I'm sure we'll be back in Los Angeles on Saturday. Uh, you're very wonderful. No. Uh, your skin is so cool and sweet. Mm -hmm. Carly, hmm? I was just wondering what part of America we ought to live in when we get back. Any place that has a garden and trees and a river close by where he can learn to swim. Who? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and if he turns out to be a young lady? Well, then she'll be a lovely little mermaid like her mother. <laughs> My little Martha. Carl. Carl, listen. Huh? A Strauss waltz. Listen. Ah. But there should be mandolins here, not Strauss waltzes. I thought I never wanted to hear that again. Carl, let's go see who it is. All right. Oh, look at the people all listening. Oh, Carl, let's go back. No, 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 no. We'll meet them. Bravo. 
Bravo, Franz, bravo. You play beautifully. Thank you, Doctor. But I see we have visitors. How do you do? My name is Franz Bruckner. How do you do? Forgive us for intruding. My name is Croft, Carl Croft. This is my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Croft? How do you do? You play beautifully. Thank you. May I present Doctor and Mrs. Casper? How do you do? How do you do? It's so moving to hear that music again. Don't you think so, Mrs. Uh, uh, Casper? It is lovely until he stops. Then it is a bitter echo in the ears. I... I am very tired. I will go to bed. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Croft. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Good night. Mrs. Casper. Good night, Franz. Please, Mr. and Mrs. Croft, won't you sit down? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Oh, this chair, Mrs. Croft, it is the most comfortable. Oh, no, please don't trouble me. No, I think you had better sit in it. Oh. oh, oh, don't blush. After all, I'm a doctor. Yes, of course. So, now we are all comfortable. As comfortable as we can be here. Yes, but thank goodness we'll be away from here by the end of the week. Away? She means back in America. But what makes you so sure you're here to get your quota number, aren't you? Yes, we are, but it will take... Not take us more than a day or two, and then we'll be in America for good, won't we, Carly? Yes, Martha. May I ask where you and Mrs. Casper are from? We are from Vienna. Oh, so you two are waiting for your quota number. Yes, we are. How long have you been here? Uh, how long have we been here, Liebchen? We have been here 14 months. 14 months? Oh, but why? Yes, quite a long, Doctor. Quota numbers, my dear Mr. and Mrs. Croft. Somewhere down a long list of immigrants who look to America for salvation, you will find our names. Ah, uh, someday the magic finger will point to us. Meanwhile, we wait. Uh, we had no idea, Doctor. No, 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 no. Don't apologize. It is very hot here, very uncomfortable, but we wait. We wait. As all must wait. No, no, not all. It can't be true. We won't have to wait so long. We can't wait so long. We can't. You are listening to Betty Davis in An American is Born, written and directed by Arch Obler on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our play continues, it's a week later. Carl and Marta Croft are in the office of the American Consul of Mexicali. But, Mr. Consul, please, Mr. Consul, can't you tell us something definite? There's a particular reason why we should get back to the States as soon as possible. Mr. Croft, Mrs. Croft, America is doing what it can. You see, our quota laws were designed to take care of as many people as America could absorb without uh, jeopardizing the economic life of the country. Though our sympathy for the unfortunate in other countries is profound, all must take their turn. I can say nothing more definite than that. Please, Mr. Consul. I'm sorry. May I advise you to have patience and keep out of the sun as much as possible? The next month, August, is the warmest we have down here. August, my baby. Uh, did you say something, Mrs. Croft? Oh, no, nothing. Patience. 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 Wait, wait. I must wait. Days, weeks, months. Wait, wait. Come now, Mrs. Croft. You sit in the corner of the veranda and talk to yourself. Who are you? My name is Holst. I'm a resident of Mexicali for many years. Importer, exporter. Can I be of help to you? No, no, thank you. Oh, no, no. Please do not go. You see, I too lived for many years in Prague. Oh, did you? Yes. Uh, as you see, I'm not Czechoslovakian, but Prague is very dear to me. Beautiful city, Prague. Oh, it's beautiful. How bitter it must be for you, this endless waiting... Tell me, perhaps I knew your family. What was your name before you were married? My name was Chernak. So? Was there not a Chernak in the Masaryk administration? My father. Indeed. Your father was a great Democrat, Mrs. Croft. Yes, he still is. Oh, he is still in Prague? Yes. Did he want you to come here? Please tell me. 
Well, my father always told me that the constitution of our little country was patterned on the American democracy. Ah, yes. He also told me that to visit America was to visit the fountainhead of democracy. I saw. How sad he's still in Europe, and now you wait to enter America to become a citizen. You do not answer. Yes, I know the waiting is endless. If uh, you will listen to me, Mrs. Croft, perhaps I can help. Help? Oh, but, but how? How is that possible? With money, it is possible. Two hundred and fifty dollars. You, you mean then our chance would come sooner? If you trust me. Well, why do you hesitate? Do you want to sit here and wait? No, it's just that, that I can't believe such good luck. I'm always glad to do what I can. If you will bring me the money. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Holst. Send a radio message to the Gestapo in Prague. Usual code. Dispose of Clemente Chernak case as is best for interest of the state. Relatives here without influence or funds. Sign my name. That is all. What's this? The little housefrau sewing again? Awful, isn't it? Your hem stitching will be shown in museums for centuries. Oh, Carly. Oh, it's so good to hear you laugh. Oh, darling, I am so happy. Did you see Mr. Holst? He wasn't in his office. Oh, well, it's only been a week. I'm sure we'll hear from him any moment. After all... Oh. Martha. Oh, I, I think that our son is getting impatient. Should I call Dr. Casper? Oh, no. Believe me, it's not going to happen here. It will happen in America. Oh, Martha. Carly, tell me. They say people born west of the Rockies are still pioneers. Does that mean he too will be a pioneer? Your face goes lovely every day. <laughs> I am lucky. Hello. Huh? But who's that? That's John. Gosh, Martha. Such news, such news. What? 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 Fun. My quota number. Tomorrow I can go into America. Wow. That's how wonderful. Oh, I, I'll be able to make money and send it over to my wife and my oh, child. Well, we're so happy oh. for you. And you've got to be happy with me. Come to the cafe. Oh, what? Oh. We'll celebrate. It's a wonderful day, and it'll be a wonderful night. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, darling? Yes, Carl, very much. Where did Franz go? Oh, running around, telling everyone his good fortune. Carl, what are you thinking? Oh, those Americans. Look how they dance. I wonder whether I could ever learn to dance like that. Neither you nor I, Carly. We were born on the wrong side of the Atlantic for that. Why do you say that? You talk so much about becoming an American. Oh, yes, I want to with all my heart. But there will always be this difference between us and them. They were born to freedom. To them, it is like the air they breathe. They aren't even conscious of it. Freedom is of them, and they are of freedom. Isn't it better for America to have people like us who think about freedom, who worry about it, who know what it means not to have it, and so know enough to want to live for it? Oh, in times like these, yes, darling. But there will be other times when the fight is won. And it is of those times and of our child, I am thinking. I want for him to be an American from his first cry. I want freedom to be in the first air he breathes for that cry. I want for him that in a world gone mad with the ravings of little men, he should be born in a country that remains sane and firm. A country that believes that man as an individual has certain inalienable rights. I love you, Martha. <laughs> ah, look. Look who I brought back to join us. Mr. Huh? Holt. Good evening, Madame Croft. Mr. Croft. How do you do, Mr. Holt? <laughs> well, uh, let's all sit down. Waiter, beer for everybody. And how are you, Mrs. Croft? Is everything all right? Concerning your visit this afternoon? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Everything is going splendidly. Then I am still very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Why, of course you are. We're all happy tonight. <laughs> oh, come, Mrs. Croft. You must dance with me. I... Oh, I am sorry. I forgot. And so did I. Almost. 
Kylie, you'd better take me home now. Yes, of course. Good night, Frank. Good night, Mrs. Scott. Good night, Mr. Holt. I'll be waiting so anxiously to hear from you. Believe me, you will. Come, come, dear. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> uh, wonderful couple. Hey, Mr. Holt. I want to talk about you. So tomorrow you leave us. Yes. My waiting is at an end. And as soon as you are in America, you will send for your family waiting in Lisbon. Why, yes, of course. Then you have plenty of money to take care of them. Wait, what are you trying to say? I'm not trying. I'm saying it. Franz Bruckner, you ought to give me the money you stole from your country. Stole? What? What are you talking about? The information came to me today. The money you took with you when you left Europe. But it was my own money. Mine. I'd worked for it all my life. And... What affair is it of yours? You're very fond of your wife and child, Bruckner. What are you saying? I'm saying that if you are concerned with the future welfare of your wife and child, you will give me the money. At once. You're... You're bluffing. You can't do a thing to my family. Must I wear my uniform to convince you? My name is Sigmund Holst. Captain Sigmund Holst. Secret police. That's why you're here... Oh, I didn't think. I have no more time to waste. The money. Oh. You will have the money in the morning. Carl. Hmm? What time is it? It's about midnight. Can't sleep? No. Get you some water? No, thank you, darling. It's so hot. Moonlight's so bright, isn't it? It's shining here and in America. Martha, darling, you said yourself tonight everything was all right. Carly, supposing he lied to us? Of course not. Mr. Holtz wouldn't lie about a thing like this. No. What would be his object? He's a respectable merchant. Yes. He'd have to give us our money back. Yes, of course. Carly, put your arms around me. Yes. It will be all right. Must be. Look that noise. What in the world? Some trouble down in the street. No, don't try to get up. I'll find out what it is. Hey, desk clerk. Hey, John, you, you, you there. Come here. What's uh, going on out there in the street? Oh, senor. Won't you trouble? See, see. Oh, Carl, what is it? Martha, Martha, you shouldn't have left the bed. I'm all right. What's the trouble? Oh, senor, won't you trouble? Senor Brockner. Franz? What about Franz? He is shot. Me? Shot? See, si, shot dead. But first, he killed senor horse. Oh, no. Jose, what are you saying? The truth, senor. First, senor Brockner killed senor horse. And then the police, they shot senor Brockner. Huh? See, si, it is the truth. But why oh, should Franz... tell us. Why did Franz shoot Mr. Holt? You... Do not know. No, what? No, what? Senor Horst, he was one of those people from Europe. See, I think the word is Gestapo. How? My baby. Marta, Jose, get Dr. Casper, run. Oh, Marta. Jose, why do you stand there? The doctor, he is gone. <laughs> Senor Croft, senor, maybe it's better we stop. She is so sick, she can't... Tell to go on. Oh, senor, it's no good. Carl. Yes, dear, yes. Don't let him stop. Oh, Marta, I tell you it would be wise... I am not asking for wisdom. Just to get... Oh, that abort. I beg you, let me tell her to stop the truck. If not for your sake, for the oh, sake of the child. For the sake of the child, then don't stop. Martha, please listen to me. We have no right to cross the border. We may never find the border. It's so dark. This is not even a road, a trail. West of the Rockies. He'll be a pioneer. Martha, try to understand. It was madness to start a hospital no. in Mexico. We must turn back. No, no. He is an American. He'll have something to live for. Martha. I won't let you stop the truck. 
Never. But our Never. court time number. It will come up sooner or later, and then we can live in America always. And we'll become citizens. And then no matter where the child is born, he will be no, a citizen. Oh, no, in America. He's got to be born in America. But, Martha... How many times must I say it? It's different when you're born in America. You start there, so it's yours. America has got to be my baby. Martha, how can you enjoy it? I will. I will. They walk like gods, these Americans. And they are gods because they have freedom to think and speak and do what they want. And I will get that for my son. I will... Oh. Jose! Jose! Stop! Stop the truck! Oh, Martha. What is what? it? The lantern. Give me the lantern, senor. No, 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 no. I'll get, I'll get the lantern. Here, senor. Oh, my little Martha. My Martha. Senor. What? Oh. oh. Senor. Jose. Jose. She, 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 she's all right. Carl. Did we stop? Yes. Carl, I... I told you not... Senor. A son. Carl. What? A son? But he wasn't born an American. Carl. Oh, Carl. Hey, you. You, come out of there. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's a soldier. Hey, what's going on there? Who are you? U.S. Border Patrol. What's going on here? Carl. What did he say? I said I'm with the U.S. Border Patrol. Say, hey, what's the matter? Carl, did you hear? United States what? Carl, Carl, Carl. Yes, Liebchen. Put your head closer. Yes. Look at him, darling. An American is born. Thank you, Betty Davis, for a deeply stirring performance on tonight's Cavalcade of America. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, Miss Davis will return with a few words for you. But first, here's news on how wood is speeding our war effort. Across the boundary of our ally to the north, Canada, men are at work tonight in a gigantic new manufacturing plant put up at record speed to turn out great battleships of the air, flying boats. Ordinarily, a plant of such vast size takes longer to build because it's made of steel girders. This one went up in a rush because its frame and roof trusses are of wood treated with chromated zinc chloride. Wood given new properties by the know-how of the chemist. Wood protected against decay, termites, and to a high degree against fire. Wood treated by the chemist is no mere substitute for metal. It becomes a brand new building material with all the excellent properties of untreated lumber and in addition valuable new qualities of its own. One of these qualities is fire resistance. Several entire railroad systems have now treated the cross ties of their bridges with chromated zinc chloride. Both the Army and the Navy are heavy users of this chemically treated wood for barracks, for plane hangars, for defense housing projects. It permits great speed of construction in comparison with steel, at the same time assuring safety and strength. This chemically treated lumber is excellent for the decking of wharves and loading platforms for guardrail posts along highways, for forest rangers' lookout towers. In mines, coal mines, for instance, wood treated with chromated zinc chloride provides safe support timbers, provides cross ties that last for 15 years instead of two. Freight cars are being made of it experimentally, and down south where cotton is spun in rooms that must be kept warm and moist at all times, so moist that a wooden roof on a textile mill rots away in short order, a roof of chemically impregnated wood outlasts several ordinary ones. 
This use of a chemical agent to transmute an old material, wood, is the kind of advance the DuPont chemist likes to think is typical of his science. For in wartime, chromated zinc chloride treatment of wood enables us to build plants at high speed, at the same time that it conserves vast tonnages of precious, all-important steel. And beyond this, with an eye to the future, chromated zinc chloride offers a way of getting more out of wood, still maintaining the balance between tree growing and tree felling. After the war, when it is possible to build new houses, people will insist on chemically treated lumber as a matter of course, as many leading architects and builders on essential construction do today. Such a house will virtually end many maintenance costs. This is the kind of progress made by the DuPont chemist in the drive for victory, which in the peace to come will be enjoyed by all of us as better things for better living through chemistry. And now, Miss Davis. Thank you. Arch Obler wrote tonight's play more than a year ago, and then just a few days ago, I read an item in my newspaper about a lady named Mrs. Lloyd B. Turner, wife of an American oil man in Venezuela. A few weeks ago, she started on a 3,000-mile journey home to Houston, Texas, to make sure that her child would be born in the United States. That, to me, is evidence of a great faith. First, she had faith that her child would be a boy, and that he would become President of the United States. As a matter of fact, however, it turned out to be a girl. But more important, Mrs. Turner had faith that our American way of life would endure, would win out over the forces of darkness against which we are fighting today. Thank you, Miss Davis, and thank you again for your stirring performance tonight. <laughs> about next week's show. Next Monday night, the Cavalcade of America will present a famous American play by a famous American playwright, Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Philip Barry. And our star will be famous too, that lovely lady of the screen, Madeline Carroll. On tonight's program, Betty Davis appears through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, for whom she is currently starring in The Man Who Came to Dinner. Playing opposite Miss Davis was Raymond Edward Johnson. The original musical score was by Gordon Jenkins, and the orchestra was under the direction of Don Voorhees. Don't forget, next week, Cavalcade presents Tomorrow and Tomorrow, starring Madeline Carroll. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the National Broadcasting Company.